received I have received the confirmation email from AWS. Then we can uh, go. We have to go to aws.amazon.com/console. So in the right side, we can see uh, sign into console. Okay, and we can sign into the console. Hello. Yeah. So we are not able to see the screen. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Are you able to see my screen now? Yes. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Let me. You can first go to AWS dot Amazon dot com. Okay. In the right side, we can see the sign into the console. Okay, this is the uh, login to uh, management AWS management console. So click on the sign into the console. Okay, if you don't have the account, uh, so you can click on the AWS free type. Or uh, you can I am a new user. You can enter your email ID here, and I am a new user and sign up for AWS account. Okay, if you have already account, you can select I am. A threatening user and my password is this one. So you can enter your uh, registered email ready with the AWS. And your AWS password. And then sign in using our secure server. Okay, in the first thing we will see the list of uh, AWS services available. Okay, so here is the quick starts page. So build a web app or launch a virtual machine, back up your files. If you want to see the documentation, you can see the documentation from here. Okay, and uh, there are some shortcuts also. Shortcuts on recently viewed services. This is the recently viewed service. Okay. So if you want to see the all services, there is a, a link on top of uh, browser here. Uh, services, you can click on the services. Here are the services. Okay, uh, we, in the compute, is uh, we have four services, EC2, Elastic Bean, and Lambda, and ECT container services. Okay, today we are going to uh, learn uh, EC2. Okay, so EC2 is a, Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud. Okay, so what we can achieve with this EC2 service? So we can create a virtual machine in the cloud and we can install or deploy our applications in this instance. Okay, we can create a, a different flavors of uh, instances. It means Linux or Windows. Generally, uh, uh, people will use Linux or uh, Windows flavors only. Okay, so I'm clicking on this EC2. Okay, so currently there are no uh, instances are running, zero instances are running, and zero elastic IPs and dedicated hosts. There are no snapshots. There are one security groups. It is a default security group. So, so how first of all how how we can create a uh, EC2 instance? Okay, uh, there is a uh, option in the left side instances, right? Or you can directly click on this zero running instances, or we can click on the uh, left side menu. Okay, in the left side menu there is a instances options under instances. Uh, block we have a instances okay click on this instances so it will show you the already existing instances list here okay currently we don't have any instances so we have to create a new instance okay so right now I am going to create a new instance so how we can create a new instance there is an option launch instance okay so we have to click the launch instance 
Okay, here it is showing the choose an Amazon machine image. Okay, it's a image AMA means Amazon machine image means a uh, AMA means it's a kind of template. Okay, it's a kind of uh, virtual machine template. So by default, uh, AWS providing some default templates, and if you don't want to use that uh, AMA templates, we can create a uh, new instance with the different uh, flavors means uh, Red Hat Enterprise or SUSE Linux or Ubuntu like this. There are some uh, different kind of OSs are available in the marketplace. Okay, and my, you can if you want to install Windows Server also, we can install. Okay. So what kind of instance? Uh, what kind of AMI we have to choose here? So we have. Uh, sign up for a free free tier account, right? So, what are the free tier eligible instances? We have to take the uh, that AMI. Okay, this is the free tier eligible, and Red Hat also free tier eligible. So, see also free tier eligible. These all are free tier eligible, but these are not a free tier eligible. Okay. So, we have to, if you want to select Amazon Linux, we can take this. What is the advantage of taking this Amazon Linux AMI? These all softwares by default installed in that EC2 instance. What is that? AWS command line tools and Python, Ruby, Perl, and Java. And some repositories like Docker, PHP, MySQL, PostgreSQL, and other packages. These all packages will be included uh, in that instance. If you create the EC2 instance using this Amazon Linux AMI, okay. If you uh, create an EC2 instance with this Red Hat Enterprise or SUSE or Ubuntu, we have to install all these softwares manually, okay. And Ubuntu, Ubuntu also available. Ubuntu server 14.0.0.4. Okay, these are uh, free tier tools. Okay, so I'm taking this first one. Okay, so you can set click on the set. Okay, the store bit uh, architecture. Okay, I'm clicking on the select. Okay, this is the, these are the configuration tests available. Choose first choose AMI and choose an instance type, configuration instance, add storage, tag instance, and config security group. And finally, review your uh, easy to system configuration and launch your instance. Okay, these are the steps we have to follow, uh, create a easy instance. Okay, so so to them is easy to use it is instance type. For us, we have eligible uh, 
for uh, creating instance type t2 dot Uh, go with a different uh, instance type or M4 4x large. It means uh, 16 GB, 16 CPUs, and 64 GB RAM. Okay. So based on our application scalability and our application usage, we have to choose the uh, instance type. Okay. So for our uh, learning purpose, so we are only eligible for a free tier eligible. It is a T2 dot micro instance type. So I am selecting this general purpose and it is a t2 dot micro instance so it means we have one cp and one gb memory it is sufficient for learning uh, and practicing aws services okay and then uh, so you, at this point also you can directly review uh, click on the review and launch or if you want to see everything uh, if you want to configure everything manually then we can go with the step by step okay so next we have to configure the instance details click on the configure instance details so this is the page where uh, we can uh, configure your instance details like uh, number of instances how many instances you want to uh, launch or uh, purchasing option or a network so if you create a, a VPC which means a virtual private network private cloud okay so we can if you have that network we have to choose okay by default AWS is providing some default okay so for now I am uh, keeping as it is uh, with the default options okay in the in the coming sessions we can see how we can create a new VPC and how we can uh, set up the different VPC and how we can create a EC2 instance for specific VPC okay for now, I am leaving uh, the default option as is, okay. And network is the VPC and subnet and auto auto assign public IP. So by default, it will assign some public IP. Uh, or uh, if you want to assign some uh, specific IP, we have to register some elastic IPs. Uh, after the elastic IP registrations, also we can assign that. Uh, public IP to the existing EC2 instance, okay? Is it clear? Any doubts so far? Okay, and the next step is add storage. So we have to add storage. Storage is where we have to install our ways. We need some a storage uh, space right to install the OS so we have to add the storage device uh, to install the OS so it is the volume type is root and the device is dev slash xvda so uh, this is the in this device uh, it is going to install our OS okay and this is the snapshot name and by default it is taking 8 GB space to install the Linux OS. Okay, if you are uh, if you are go with the Windows system by default, it will uh, take a 30 GB. Okay, it is a, a minimum requirement to uh, create a Windows Server EC2 instance. Okay, so it is a general purpose SSD. So here volume type is general purpose SSD and provision IOPS SSD and magnetic. There are three types of volume types. Uh, generally, uh, I will use this general purpose SSD. It is a standard uh, uh, storage purpose. Okay, if you want to um, increase uh, uh, IOA, uh, it means uh, input output per second rate. If you want to increase, if you want to increase your performance of the system, uh, then we can go with this provision IOPS. But it will uh, it will increase your cost. Okay. Based on the requirement only, we have to choose this uh, provision IOPS SSD. Okay. Generally, we will use this general purpose SSD only. Okay. And this is the IOPS speed, like 300. It it will write uh, 100 uh, 
uh, input output stream uh, per second. Okay, it will process these many requests per second, these many writes in, in a per second. So here we can see the write uh, some note here. Free tier eligible customers can get up to 30 GB of EBS general purpose SSD or magnetic storage. Okay, about so if you want more learn about free usage, we can go here. So why I'm saying this 30 GB? So if you create a Windows Server EC2 instance, okay, by default it will take the 30 GB. Okay, if you create after that, if you create another EC2 instance, it will be chargeable because 30. This is the EBS. This size is the EBS. So we have used 30 GB EBS space for a single uh, Windows Server EC2. So we cannot create uh, different uh, other instances uh, freely. OK? OK, and then uh, next. Sir, hi, uh, out. Yeah. So coming to step four regarding add storage. So yeah. as you discussed, that size is 8 GB. Yeah. So. My RAM supports up to 4 GB. Is it possible for AWS to install? Your RAM supports means? My RAM configuration is up to 4 GB. Satish, yeah. Satish, Satish. See, you want to increase this size, right? Your box. Uh, uh, see, can you please let me go on? Satish, you are not creating the instance in your box, OK? You are logged okay, okay. into the Amazon Web Services. In Amazon Web Services data center, you are creating this instance. So okay. if you have internet connection, you don't be having any issues. That's it. You are not doing okay. anything in okay, your system. You. OK, I got it. Got it. Yeah, this, this is just a storage. If you want extra uh, data storage, we can add a volume here. We can click add new volume and we can attach extra size also. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. While creating also, we can configure this. How much RAM uh, in the instance type choosing. There, when you choose instance type, based on that, you will get the RAM and CPUs. Okay, currently we, we have chosen t2.micro, means we, have, we get one CPU and 1 GB RAM. If you choose different uh, instance type, we may get 2 GB or 8 GB RAM or 8 CPUs like that. Okay, but this, if you want increase, we can increase this hardware uh, size of this storage. But uh, for OS purpose, 8, uh, 8 GB is enough. Okay, because why 8 GB is enough? We, are, we will not store anything in the OS drive. Okay, if you want, if you want to put some data, additional data, so, or if you want to store some data in your EC2 instance, we can add a new volume, and we have, we can create a extra volumes, and we can attach the volumes to existing instance. Okay, is it clear? Okay, and then next tag instance so it is a tag means it is a, a kind of grouping okay like uh, I am giving the training or, uh, or a web server like this it's, it means grouping of your instances like I have a, uh, 10 servers so in the 10 servers I have installed MySQL server in two instances so I can group those two instances in this tag Okay. Okay, and the next step is configure security group. So in the configure security group, a security group is a set of firewall rules. Uh, so why we have to uh, configure the security group? If you want allow traffic from other uh, other systems means if you want to allow this EC2 instance publicly you have to configure your security group by default it won't allow it will block all the ports using your security group we have to configure your ports 
in the security group what are the ports you want to allow outside the world okay so if you have any existing uh, security group we can select the existing security group or if you want to create a new security group we can create a new security group here okay so when I click on this create a new security group by default one rule is added here that is a SSH without adding this SSH once we launch the uh, EC2 instance we cannot we cannot connect to the that EC2 instance through PuTTY if PuTTY is a uh, client to connect to the uh, Linux systems okay so I am taking uh, the create a new security group and I am giving the group name security group name training okay and we can provide the description for this security group and this is the there are uh, different kind of rules available here okay by default SSH is added if you want to add HTTP we can add HTTP or HTTPS or SMTPS so it will add so how we can add we can click on add rule so we can add a new rule here so if I want to allow HTTP so it is by default it is populating TCP that is the default port 80 and here we have to source so anywhere means from anywhere we can access the system on these ports okay if you want specify custom we can customize uh, if you configure any security groups we can based on that also we can allow okay or if you want to allow only some particular IP address so we can uh, select my IP so this is the my IP so I can access from my internet my network only you we cannot access this system from other networks because I have chosen my IP okay so anywhere means we can access this instance from any network okay it, it, it will be exposed to out of the world okay so uh, I am removing this HTTP port okay and then review and launch so here we can review the EC2 instance details so the first uh, AMA details is we have chosen this Amazon Linux AMA and the instance type is t2.micro and security groups training is the security group name and we have enabled 22 port to connect to uh, EC2 instance through putty through SSH connection okay and the instance details we can see the instance details here uh, it's a we can see the subnet and VPC everything we can see here okay and the next one is storage so we have added only one storage volume uh, to install uh, OS in this device okay so on the tags we tag this uh, this instance name some training okay and then the, everything is correct so we can click on the launch so when you click on the launch it will open you pop up uh, select an existing key pair or create a new pair new key pair okay if you have already the private key with you uh, to connect to the AWS EC2 instances we can choose an existing key or we can create a new key pair okay so create a new key pair so I am giving the pay key pair name here uh, let me give EC2 training okay this is the my key pair name so and then click on download key pair okay so what is the purpose of this key is so using this key only we can connect to AWS EC2 
instance. If you lost this key, we cannot connect to the EC2 instance. Okay. And then click on uh, launch instances. So it will take uh, two to five minutes to prepare uh, EC2 instance. Okay. So if you want to see the log, uh, what happening in the background, we can see the log here. You can click on the view log or if you want to see the list of instances, view the, click on the view instances. Okay, so you can click on view log. So creating security groups successful, authorizing inbound rules successful, initiating launch, launches and applying tax, launch initiation complete. Okay, this is the log and you can go to the list of instances clicking on this view instances. Okay, so here is the created instance. The instance name is training and this is the instance ID and the instance type is micro and this is the availability zone. So currently I am in the California, uh, California uh, origin. So in the AWS there are different origins. So based on uh, your requirement, so where you want to host your server, based on that you have to choose your origin. Suppose I want to host uh, uh, server in the Singapore. So then I have to choose this Asia Pacific Singapore origin. Okay. So it will be passed because uh, the server is hosted on this Singapore zone. Uh, otherwise, if you host your uh, server in the California and you are accessing uh, through Singapore, it will be uh, your performance will be reduced. Okay, if you host the instance in the same uh, origin, your performance will increase. Okay. So currently, status is initializing. If you want to see the latest status, there is a refresh icon on top here. So we can click on the refresh. Here. will take some time uh, to complete the installation setup. So in the right side, you can see this is the public uh, DNS. Using this public DNS only, we can uh, connect to this EC2 instance. OK, uh, this is the public IP for this EC2 instance. We can connect to this instance using this public DNS or this public IP. OK. Is it clear? Any doubts? Uh, it's clear, Sri. Why, uh, you guys have any doubt? You are having any doubts? No, sir. Yeah, you can continue, Sri. Okay. So, uh, let me give you some uh, overview here. So, once your instance is up and running, we can monitor the instance performance in the monitoring tab the bottom once you select this instance here in the bottom we can see the tabs description status text monitoring okay in the monitoring we can see the cpu utilization and disk rates disk operations everything we can see in this in the bottom of this instance usage okay and let me Okay, so instances are creating. So how we can connect to this instance? Through putty or different terminals. So here, click on the connect. Okay, there are two different ways. A standalone SSH client or a Java SSH client directly from browser. We can directly connect through browser or we can download some SSH client and connect to the EC2 instance. Okay, so let me download SSH client. So where we can download SSH client? So we can connect open an SSH client. So where we can download connect to Putty. 
so we can we have we can download the putty from here okay so all of you know about putty or you know how to install putty So, we can go to download putty, uh, we have to download putty gen also. So, we can download putty gen from here. So put it in, you can click on this. So why we need this footage is we change the permissions. So why we need this footage is so when we launch the instance we have downloaded the EC2 training.pem file. Okay, we cannot connect to EC2 instance uh, Linux system uh, using this PEM file. So we have to convert this PEM to PPK file. So when this PEM file is useful, so when you are trying to connect to Linux system to Linux system, then we have to use this PM file. Okay, if you are connecting to Linux system through Putty uh, from Windows system, uh, we have to use PPK file. Is it clear? When you are connecting to Linux system from Windows, so we need PPK file. When you are connecting to Linux system, from Linux system, we have to use PEM file. Okay, so how we can convert this PEM file? So you can download the footage and there is an option load. Okay, click on the load, browse your PEM file. Okay, browse your PEM file, open, okay, successfully imported foreign key, okay, you can click on OK, and then save private key, okay, are you sure you want to save this key without a passphrase to protect it, okay, if you want to put passphrase for this uh, private key, we can put passphrase, okay, I, I don't want to put passphrase here, so, no. I'll see. Are you sure you want to save this key without password? Yes. Okay. So it is asking where you want to save our PPK file. So EC2. Okay. And then save. Okay. Then we can close this protection. OK, 
okay next i have to uh, download the putty okay click on putty okay i downloaded putty also So double click on putty. So here in the host name we have to give the public DNS or a public IP of the EC2 instance. So go to AWS management console. So this is ready. Two by two checks. So it is fully up and running this EC2 instance, EC2 instance. So I this is the public DNS for my EC2 instance. So I'm copying this and go to putty and paste the host name here. And this is the port 22 and it is SSH. And next this is the SSH key authentication. So then we have to expand SSH. There is a auth option in the left side. Click on auth. Click browse your PPK file. Browse. Okay, select your PPK file and then open. Click on open. Yes. So, login as uh, the default user is EC2 iPhone user. Okay. I Ubuntu. Uh, if you are installing Ubuntu uh, OS, uh, default user is Ubuntu. For uh, Linux, uh, Amazon Linux AMI, uh, default user is EC2 iPhone user. Okay. So now we are able to connect to this instance. Is it clear? Any doubts? Uh, boys, uh, just to rephrase uh, the things that we seen as part of this class, we have created one Linux machine as part of AWS um, data center. Then we have seen how to connect uh, to that uh, machine from our uh, from our local machine. That's yes. all, uh, uh, Sri, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, we'll be sharing this video uh, as soon as this class is finished. You just try that, okay. and uh, if you face any issues, uh, we'll see. Sweet. Okay. Okay. If you, yeah. So in this, we can check the installations also. So I want to check the Java is installed or not in this system. So Java is installed. Okay, is Java is. Command not for this, it is not uh, properly set in the path, so we can set it. Okay, so some default softwares are there. So if you want to see the PHP version, some default tools are installed. Okay, uh, let me access this URL. I hope Apache is installed. Yeah, we cannot access because uh, we have opened only 22 port. So through 22 port, we can connect to this EC2 instance through SSH only. Okay, we have have not uh, enabled any other ports. So how we can enable other ports? So if you see in the left side, uh, there is an option network and security. Okay, under network and security, security groups. Okay, you can click on the security groups. Okay, there are two uh, security groups. This is the default security group. Okay, and this one is the which we have created. 
okay so at any point of time you can edit your existing security groups okay this is a description about your security group so inbound is what ports you want to enable uh, to receive a request so these are the inbounds so the default port is uh, 22 port one, uh, SSH protocol is enabled okay if you want other ports you can click on edit here and click on add rule okay so I am adding HTTP So the default port is 8080. Sorry, 80. So and then save. Okay. Once you add new rule, you no need to restart any services. Okay, you can directly access. Okay, then go to instances and copy this public DNS. and then paste I think I think uh, Apache server also not installed in this system so that's why we are getting the page not found here okay so if any application is exposed on 8080 we can access the application uh, using that URL okay so, Click on security groups. Okay, and edit the security group. So suppose if you installed a Windows Server VM, a Windows Server EC2 instance. So, so how we can connect to the remote uh, desktop? So we have to enable the remote desktop port also. So edit the inbound rule, add rule. So what type of protocol here we have to choose RDS RDP remote desktop so this is the default for, for remote desktop okay and choose the anywhere so we can take remote desktop from anywhere okay it's not a best practice if you are working with any organizations so best practice is you have to put some custom and you have to uh, configure your network IP address IP ranges okay if you put this you can give the IP range here if you put this it will take your local IP address okay and then save okay so here we have added RTP uh, protocol also so we, if you have any Windows uh, EC2 instances we can uh, connect to Windows systems using this port okay public IP along with this port public IP or public DNS well, uh, whichever we can use okay, and uh, can I continue or uh, not for today uh, Sri, let's see tomorrow. No? Uh, let them practice this uh, this session today. Oh. Uh, we can. Okay. Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So I hope everyone is created. Uh,